And while I've taken questions on this case on multiple radio shows and other press conferences, uh, I know that I haven't spoken about it as much as the press and the public would like. And I do understand uh, that frustration. But if you bear with me, I'll, I'll try to explain. Uh, I do try to make myself available as much as possible to the press on any number of topics. And you've heard me say multiple times before from this very podium that what happened to Ronald Green was horrific, that no family should ever have to experience what the Green family has experienced and is, continues to go through. No mother should ever have to see her son die a violent death. And I stand by that. I reiterate that today. And I'm not here to make excuses for what took place. As I've said before, those officers and their actions do not represent the standards to which all law enforcement officers should be held. I have said that too on a number of occasions before today. Further, I have said that the manner in which Mr. Green was treated that night was criminal. Now let me go further. I cannot imagine that had Mr. Green been white, he would have been treated that way. And so I think we have to acknowledge racism when we see it. I think we have to make sure that we call it what it is. You know, Mr. Green was panicked. He was terrified. He was letting the officers know that he was scared. He was calling them their brother. Absolutely heartbreaking and wrong. And we would all do well as individuals and collectively if we would just acknowledge that. And that there is implicit bias in many, many people. And too often there is outright racism. And we have to do more to identify that early on and separate people from their badges when they're not worthy of wearing one, when they're not committed to serving and protecting the public. Now, I will never do anything, and I have never done anything, to impede or impair an investigation I have never done anything to prevent justice from being served. And I want to back up just a moment with you because what may not be clear is that before the videos were made public, I declined to characterize them. Not because my opinion was different then than it is today, but because I had been asked by the U.S. Department of Justice that videos not be made public so as not to interfere or interrupt, compromise their investigation. I believe their request applied to my thoughts about the videos as well. However, once they were in the public arena, I no longer felt bound by that limitation and I expressed the opinion that I felt from the beginning, the opinion I held from the very first time that I saw the videos in October of 2020, that the misconduct seen in the video was criminal. It was wrong, it was inexcusable. I do think it's important for you to have some context about how I learned about the incident. 
On May the 10th, 2019, I received a text from Colonel Reeves, and this is what it said. Good morning and FYI. Early this morning, troopers attempted to stop a vehicle in Washtenaw Parish. The driver fled through two parishes in excess of 110 miles per hour, eventually crashing. Troopers attempted to place the driver under arrest, but a violent, lengthy struggle took place. After some time struggling with the suspect, troopers were joined by a Union Parish deputy and were able to take the suspect into custody. EMS was summoned to assess the suspect's injuries. The suspect remained combative, but became unresponsive shortly before EMS arrived. The suspect was later pronounced dead at the hospital. We are investigating the suspect's death. I then responded, thank you. This text was released by my office from my phone over a month ago to the Associated Press. As you can see, no other information was given in the text about the individuals involved with the circumstances, certainly no names. And obviously, at the time I received the text, I had not seen any footage and would not see any video of the incident until October of 2020, some 15 months later. Um, after seeing the videos, I know it is impossible to forget the deeply troubling images from Mr. Green's arrest, from the excessive and I believe unlawful use of force that was used against him by the state police officers at the scene. But I will reiterate that in 2019, all I knew was that an incident had occurred, that it was being investigated. You also need to know that that text was one of many notifications that I received from Colonel Reeves about any number of different issues on a regular basis, whether it's train derailments or bomb threats to fatal crashes to sometimes serious things as officer-involved shootings or certainly, as in this case, in custody deaths. And these reports come to me uh, from the superintendent of the state police uh, without regard to which agencies are involved. So anytime those things happen, in the state. And I will tell you there are too many times, too frequently, tragedies happen in this state. And in most cases, I am made aware of the basic facts soon thereafter. That's the way this incident played out. As governor, I trusted that this matter would be handled appropriately by state police. I have never gotten involved in an investigation by the state police or any other law enforcement agency. And quite frankly, I trusted that I would be made aware of further developments if necessary. But I will tell you, I do not believe the governor, myself, or any governor should ever be involved in directing criminal investigations. That would be entirely inappropriate in my view. And I know from what's being written and said, without any basis in fact, by the way, uh, that there are implications that I knew more or that one or more of my staff members tried to cover up what happened. I will say that that is simply and categorically false. In September 20th, uh, a number of days after Hurricane Laura, and while we were at DOSEP dealing with that event and with COVID, uh, I learned of the very serious allegations against the state police troopers from the Ronald Green incident because of the civil litigation that had been filed. And at that point in time, I began to learn the details of what happened that night, the existence of body cameras and dash cameras documenting the events. Subsequent to that, several family members, members of the media, and members of the Legislative Black Caucus asked for the videos to be released to the public. 
I had my office in turn reach out to the U.S. Department of Justice, then the lead agency in determining whether criminal charges would be brought, and specifically asked the Department of Justice verbally, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Department, we asked them whether we could make the videos public. The answer we got back, uh, both verbally and in writing, was that the evidence to include the videos should not be made public because there was a concern that it would impair the investigation, potentially compromise it. So at my request, my staff went back to the Department of Justice and asked would it be okay with them if we showed the video and evidence to the family members of Mr. Green, their attorneys, and a number of members of the Black Caucus who had expressed an interest in viewing them. The Department of Justice consented to that. We then worked with the U.S. Attorney for the Western District and District Attorney uh, John Belton, uh, the District Attorney for Union Parish, uh, to make sure that the presentation would be in accord with what they thought was appropriate. And we asked the district attorney to be the one to actually present the videos and the evidence and to answer whatever questions would come up to the extent that he could. DA Belton uh, did do that, and that occurred on October the 14th of 2020. And on that day, I met with members of the Green family. Uh, I did express to them my sympathy for the loss of their son and brother. And on that same day, as I mentioned, several legislative black caucus members were in attendance and saw the videos. I saw the videos for myself the, for the first time only a few days before. In addition to the videos, there were other items of evidence that, that were made available uh, to the family as well. I have been asked many times, both in public and in private, my thoughts on the videos. I have also been asked about reports that Mr. Green's family was told that he died in a car accident. Clearly, anyone who has seen the videos will see that Mr. Green did not die in a car accident. The initial text I received did not say he died in a car accident. And if anyone ever said that, it was just plain wrong. Despite some recent comments by other, I will tell you that I have never said that Mr. Green died in a car accident. I haven't said it in public. I haven't said it in private. What I have consistently said is that the cause of death is obviously a part of the investigation and that the state and federal prosecutors have to make the decision based on the proof that they have available to them on whatever evidence they have. Another recent allegation is that my office was somehow involved in trying to influence the criminal investigations. That too is categorically false. There is not a shred of truth to that. The communications my office has had with law enforcement and prosecutors in this matter have been to work to coordinate the viewing of the videos and to request that authorities meet with family members to update them on the investigations. Just as I mentioned to you all ago, I am certain that the district attorney the U.S. Attorney, State Police, and the FBI would confirm that at no time did I or anyone in my office attempt to interfere with or influence their investigations in any way. Now, I was made aware in October 2020 of the investigation that was conducted of the events surrounding Mr. Green's deaths, death. At that time, I was made aware that the investigation done by the Louisiana State Police produced a lengthy report 
along with video evidence that was turned over to the district attorney for Union Parish, John Belton, on August the 20th of 2019. I think it's important to say that date again. The report was sent to the state prosecutor in August of 2019. Within a matter of weeks, on September the 9th, 2019, Mr. Belton referred this matter to federal authorities, to the U.S. Department of Justice. While I did not know this at the time, it was very important for me to learn of the serious allegations and of the investigation, even though it was over a year since the accident. And the central premise of the AP article is that somehow I was trying to hide or interfere with the investigation to protect my political chances in an election year. And I will tell you that despite the fact that this goes beyond every ounce of my being, every ounce of my character and my principles, it is just simply not who I am, it's not what I do, I can't even conjure the words in my mind to ask or direct that a criminal investigation be delayed or changed or altered or any of those things. It didn't happen. But I'll tell you, it doesn't make any sense either. If I was interfering with the investigation because of the election, how does it make sense that the videos and the investigative files were turned over to the DA into the Trump Department of Justice a month and a half before the election in 2019. It doesn't make sense. It didn't happen. Nothing like that has ever happened because of me. That is not who I am as a person. Again, I did not know at the time, in 2019, that these files and videos had been turned over, that the matter had been referred to the U.S. Department of Justice, because precisely, it is not my role to be involved in the investigation. However, the facts are clear that the evidence of what happened that night was presented to prosecutors well before my election, state and federal prosecutors. And I'll just remind you, to the Trump Department of Justice at a time when the president was coming to Louisiana to campaign against me. I will not speculate on the outcome of the state and federal investigations. However, I completely and fully agree with the Green family that they deserve answers and the full accounting of what happened to their son and to their brother that night. They also deserve a resolution to this matter. I am hopeful that all of the information being considered by the prosecutors will be available for the family sooner rather than later. And you should all know that we worked with state police uh, and with the Black Caucus and the law enforcement community in general to make change, to make positive change. Those include that it is now cause for termination if an officer does not intervene. It is cause for termination for not using a body camera. Choke holds are now banned along with the use of impact weapons to the head and neck. Further, supervisors are now required to review and track excessive force incidents. There's still a lot of work to do. When Colonel Lamar Davis became head of the state police in October 2020, we talked about the need for better transparency, accountability, and above all, how to prevent violent deaths like Mr. Green's from happening in the first place through things like better training and supervision. And I will reiterate, the way we 
I also saw Mr. Green being treated by law enforcement on those videos. Certainly should have never happened. But more emphatically, should never, ever happen again. No one deserves to be treated that way. And I do believe we have to recognize and face that many people have implicit bias and, and we can work through that. But there are some people in whom racism is so entrenched that they're just gonna have to be separated from their badge as soon as possible. No, this should have never happened. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. It is an opportunity for us to learn from the tragedy and to continue to work to improve. I do believe that Colonel Davis and his staff are working every day to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Change is happening now. It never comes as quickly as we would like. We have started. It will continue. And we're going to accelerate. We're going to continue to work on improvements both within state police and through the legislature if they will support those efforts. And I fully expect that they will.